Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Today, let me introduce you to Bernini Marmarino. Okay, Bernini Marmarino. Bernini's the company, Marmarino's the product. Here we have it. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready for today's technique is I've base coated the surface with Bernini's Quartz Fondo. Quartz Fondo is a, well, let's go this way. Fondo means base. Quartz is the material. It's a quartz based product. I gotta be careful my words here. So it is a quartz, quartz is the base and it's also a quartz based coat for the Bernini line of lime plasters. They have one primer that goes under all of their plasters. Very simple, very easy. It is not a primer, it is a base coat, meaning if you have raw, brand new drywall, raw plaster, raw wood, whatever, get a specific primer for those finish, for those surfaces, and then put the quartz fondo over top of it. Or else you're gonna be using a lot of quartz fondo, which is gonna make other people happy because you're gonna be buying it, because you're gonna be using so much of it just to do the job of something else. So it's made as a base coat, not a primer, okay? Soap and water cleanup, uh, interior, exterior. I rolled this with a half inch nap and that's it. All right, for the next step, Bernini's Marmarino. Now, this is a true lime Marmarino, 13, uh, was it? The pH level is at 13 and what does that mean? Breathability, high adhesion factor, uh, and no mold and mildew. So that's a very important number. You can find all that on the website. But Bernini Marmarino, interior, exterior, lime, plaster. This is it, I'm staring it up. It's exciting. I wonder what color he's going to use. Well, we're gonna find out here in a little bit. If you tint it yourself, you must use oxide colorants because they are lime stable. Do not use paint. Do not use any kind of synthetics. Universal colorants, oxide, okay? or just call Bernini when you order it and they'll tint it for you. Quite simple, all right? So when you get it, it comes in a big five, actually it comes in a five gallon gallon of quart, so you can experiment with the quarts. Um, stir it up. It's a white, I don't wanna say white, it's a tint base, it's an off white. So it's a real pretty soft color, uh, very pretty color, but it's not pure white. So you could just use it straight out of the bucket if you want that nice, soft, soothing, relaxing feel. That would work anywhere or start putting some color to it and get creative and have some more fun. But for today's purpose, I have to use somewhat of a darker color so it shows up on this camera. Okay, so I've tinted it up. Nice and fluffy. Fluffy, it has air in it, okay? That's what we want. It's the tools for today. Pavon 844, I. This is the 0.5 millimeter. Now, if you're curious what that means, there is another video that explains about the trials. And you can find that just down below in the description area. All right, so we got the Pavon 844i and we're gonna use our spatula. All right, let's load the trial up. Like so, you see how the plaster's on there? Helps if it's in the light, yeah? All right, now, I'm right-handed, so I usually work this way, but be because you're over here, and this is gonna be discombobulated, I'm gonna to have to do left hand. Top corner, get started. Like you were cutting in a room, just cut across the top a little bit. Cut across the side just a little bit. All right. That was the base, kind of the same thing. This doesn't like the left hand side very well. There we go. It's amazing you get the right grip on the trial, what it can do for you when you're using the wrong hand. Those are my glasses, huh? Good thing they're insured. That's what happens when your hair is too silky. <laughs> it just flies off.
Oh, it's so much easier with the correct hand. <laughs> there, let's clean this up a little bit. Meaning, take the excess off the trowel. And I'm just gonna come through. I should have done a better job, but just kind of give myself some motion as I clean. All right. Now, building a plaster or completing a plaster finish is like building a house. In that case, this case, this is our foundation. So if we have a lot of sloppiness, irregularities, texture, things that become busy, that will make our finish busy. And it'll actually telegraph through because when we do each layer after this, everything that we've created here, this movement, will start to telegraph through. And that works by, you can't see this, but right here the plaster's got to see this mark. Actually, I know how to do this. I'll see, hold on a second and I'll see in a little bit. All right, we're ready to move on. It's dry, not 100% dry, but it's dry. Got a little bit of moisture in it. That's why you're seeing some movement. So that's the beauty of a lime material. You can kind of go while it's still in this stage, you can go over it as long as I look, it's not going anywhere. It's got a little moisture trapped in it, but what that's gonna do is help promote adhesion. So if this plaster sets for the long, well, you put the plaster on, you put the marmorino on the surface, the longer it sets out in the air, the harder it gets to that whole process of turning back into limestone. So as the water evaporates out or disperses, what you have left is the limestone. So meaning, the longer you let this sit without going over top of it, the harder and harder and harder it gets. That means it will be less uh, receptive to taking in a new layer without a special bonding agent. That's not a big deal. What that means is don't let the wall set too long between coats, okay? That's it, don't, you know, don't do a coat today and go to the beach for a weekend. Okay, so we're ready to move on. And here's what I was talking about with the foundation, crooked foundation, crooked walls, crooked roof, and everything inside will be discombobulated as well. So if you have a sloppy foundation here, or your sloppy base, your marmorino, if it's got a lot of movement, a lot of texture, well, that's gonna telegraph through and here's why. See this movement? See this cloud, it's a little darker right here. Darker, 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 lighter, lighter. More plaster, less plaster, more plaster, less plaster. So these right now are thicker than this. That's why it's drying quicker here. So when I take and trowel over it, the trowel is gonna ride on these high spots and fill in any low spots. When I mean by low spots, I'm talking like very minimal. Not much at all. But it's gonna scrape across the high spots, leaving a thin layer of marmorino. So when the next phase, this will dry quicker and this will dry slower. So you're telegraphing to it, your, your finish comes through. Okay, but we're dry. Let's do our second coat. Let's get the same stuff here. My Marino, same trial that Pavon 844i. Same way of doing it. And the other thing, it goes so nice over top of itself. It just really nice. Actually, it's one of the easiest plashes I've ever worked with. I just like that little organic movement. It hides the method of application. There it is. Except for that little spot. Little, get in there. All right, there we go. Just doing some quick cleaning up. I mean, honestly, this was gonna drive people crazy as I could start to burnish this right now. Huh? Yes, I could. And here's why. I put the second coat on super tight, believe it or not. And what happens is, meaning by pulling that second coat tight, 
It's very thin. And any minute you're going to see this. Well, I'm not going to turn this off. I'm going to keep going for a minute. So what's going to happen is how do I know when this is ready to burnish? That's the number one question that I get. So what does that, when I look at it and I go, well, there's moisture on the surface. It's not ready. Because all I'm going to do, it means if there's moisture on the surface, I can pull the plaster off. So if I do that with my finger and I know when I use this big trial and a little bit of pressure, I'm going to make more plaster come off and we don't want that. So when I look at it and I go, yeah, there's moisture. Let's let it sit. But this is a sample board. In a room, I'm going to keep working. And every so often, I'm going to look back and I go, that's getting kind of ready. And I'm not yet though. And I'll just keep going. I'll go, now it's ready. And I'll drop back and I'll burnish it. Burnishing is not that big of a deal. Don't overthink it. Biggest problem sometimes, you, one, you get into the material too soon, you get into the ah, you get into the marmorino too soon before it's had a chance to bond to the layer underneath, and you can pull it off. If you use too much pressure, you're going to see it peel up a little bit. Okay. The whole thing about burnishing, it's like a hmm. The material will let you know when you get started. It will say, "I'm ready." So you hear that sound, I'm going over the plaster, okay? I'm basically, I'm compressing it. Not basically, I am compressing it. But you're like, you just did this. It's a sample. I've been doing this for a little while, okay? And I know how to, I like to put it on. This is a classic installation application. All right, let's do this. Always keep a trowel handy just in case you get something on your trowel when you're burnishing. The angle. Does that make sense? Absolutely not. It's silly. It's about 35 degrees. But don't hold it flat. This trowel, Pavon 844i. All the Pavons are some of the they're the best trowels out there. This bevel, when you feel where that bevel is on the surface. Like down too low, it's like, mm, it doesn't feel right. Doesn't sound quite right. Too high, doesn't sound quite right. But when you get it just where you want it, there it is. All right. Remember, these are sharp. Be very careful. Don't do that. Now, here's the thing about Marmorino. This Marmorino, Bernini Marmorino. I can burnish it from a, basically a mat to a super high gloss. So it's up to you. Now, the more you compress it to burnish it, when you compress it, you're pressing the material. And what happens is any moisture left in that surface, let's say this is the base. Wait a minute. Here we go. Okay, here's our plaster. See, it's really plaster, your substrate. When I compress, I'm pushing. The moisture is not going to go down. It's going to come up. That creates a real fine, very fine slurry. And what happens is when you catch it the right way, I can redistribute that little tiny slurry and fill in all the little surfaces. So I can either give it a soft burnish. See that? This is the same product. These are samples I made the other day. Okay. Look at, there's no sheen. This is just a darker color, clearly. All right. But look at that. It's so pretty. Can you see any, there's some movement. Look at that. Yeah. See how soft that is. Imagine this in a bedroom, a living room, the softer, the reflection or the higher the sheen, the more cold things can tend to feel. So just soft, soothing, relaxing is nice for certain rooms. But here, now all three of the, tell the boss I just dropped the hair dryer. He'll get so aggravated. All three of these samples came from the exact same bucket, the exact same color, the exact same everything, except I burnished them differently. This is the first one we just talked about. See it? Nice and soft living room, any room, meditation room, your yoga spot. Same thing. 
This has a little bit slighter burnish, a little bit slighter, a little bit heavier, a little more burnish to it. See the movement though? And then let me bring it in ever so softly. You can kind, not really, but see there's more movement, okay? And again, what happens is as you're compressing, you're pushing the two together. So the more compression, the more interest you get. This is not quite. But see, look, I can touch it and there's no fingerprints. So it's still too soft. See this? This is what I'm looking for. It's uh, one of the guys that taught me so much about plaster a long time ago. It was from Montpellier, France. And it was, uh, oh my God, I, I just spaced out for a second. So rude. Pierre, who's no longer in the industry. But um, he always referred to the plaster is when it's in love. So meaning, you know, when you first get with somebody, it's all kissing and sloppy and like wet plaster, you know? Nobody, ugh. And after a while, when it's dry, it gets cold and it's hard and you can't do anything with it except to damage it. But when it's in that perfect state, when everything's working just right and everything's communicating and getting along, the plaster's in love. And that's what he always said. When the plaster's in love, that's when you're ready to burnish it. And you're going, that's ridiculous. About 85% dry, okay? Humid. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more. Do I? Nah, we can get into it. Why am I touching it? I'm feeling how cold it is. When it's cold, I can also tell there's a lot of moisture, like it's really cold, it's more moisture, that's a little soft too. But the burnish, look, I, I'm right-handed. I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna hit it just from a couple different directions. Let's, look, I'm barely touching this, okay? All right, you saw that. I have not stopped this camera one bit. Now the inch, it's not dry, but hold on. Okay. Look how smooth it is. And I, I didn't even look, man, I, I barely got into that with the trial to burnish it or compress it. And it's got a slight sheen to it. Now here's the nice thing. At this point, I can keep just waiting. I can leave it alone or I can keep going and burnishing it to get that high gloss, depends on what the client has selected ahead of time. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this down real quick and I'll come back and we'll see what we have here in a minute. Okay, there you have it. The marmarino finish is dried. Let me show you what we have. All I did was pull the tape off. I did not do anything else to it. A lot of movement because there's some compression. Plus it's a darker color. The darker the color, the more movement you're gonna see. The lighter the color, the less movement. Now, there's lights around here, so let's see what happens as far as the sheen, if it picks it up. It's a very soft sheen. That light's over there, about 10 feet away. We're gonna bring this over. And you can't see my reflection in it, okay? So it's just a soft, soft luster. But remember, you are in total control of this finish. You can. Well, you're gonna have a bunch of sample boards and you show your clients the sample boards and make sure you indicate the level of sheen and burnish. That's becoming a big thing nowadays. Some people don't want real shiny finishes. They want the marmarino. Somebody is like, well, how do we get it? Just don't burnish it as much, No less compression, all right? Um, if you're using a light colors, plastic trowels, um, other than that, I think that's it. I think I got it all covered. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section below. Down there, below in the description area, you're going to find links to the tools, the materials, and everything else you're going to need looking for to recreate this technique, as well as information on classes and commissioning me. And as of right now, well, the schedule's up. You'll see it. There's classes in Maryland, Hollywood, and Miami. Um, other than that, that's it. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great evening.